The year is 2019. I'm still in high school, and I'm eating at a restaurant with my family when my brother comes over and shows me a video. I had no clue at the time that video would lead to the creation of this video, me majoring in aeronautical engineering, and hundreds of hours spent exploring a world I didn't yet know existed. It's not uncommon for YouTube to inspire people to buy, and more importantly, play video games like Kerbal's Space Program, whether it be because of the featured gameplay itself or the production of the video, and really what I wanted to do in this video was to provide my take on why you should get Kerbal's Space Program, based on my own experience and the variety of awesome gameplay mechanics present within KSP. Also, if you already own Kerbal's Space Program, you should still stick around because you might find something interesting. And, if you want, please share any reasons why you think people should buy KSP in the comments section below. So I think the best place to start is explaining what Kerbal Space Program is, if you don't already know. To be honest, it's difficult for non-players to understand KSP, and for a while, when one of my family members would ask me what it was, instead of using words, I would just show them a random video from YouTube of someone doing something cool in the game. In short, KSP is an aerospace flight simulator. Aerospace being the umbrella term for the engineering fields of aeronautics, think airplanes, and astronautics, think spaceships. It sounds simple enough. Just load up the space shuttle, press go, and watch it lift off into orbit. No. It's more like this. Build some firecracker-looking rocket, press spacebar, but then realize you set the parachutes to activate at the same time as the engines as you watch in horror. Your rocket flip over and explode onto the ground. Good thing you haven't quicksaved yet, and you can still revert to launch. In Kerbal Space Program, there are no guidelines, nothing built in to keep your rockets intact and to make them go where you want to. You have to build and fly things yourself. These mechanics are quite complicated. Already, this is where explaining KSP becomes less efficient than just showing someone gameplay footage, so that's what I'm going to do. The player is given a wide array of parts to build with, ranging from engines to scientific instruments to command pods and more. These different parts can be put together in infinite arrangements, giving the game nearly limitless replay value. Once designed, your crafts can be flown wherever they have enough energy to take themselves. With fairly realistic orbital mechanics, you can travel to any of the many planets and moons within the Kerbal Solar System. Here is where Kerbal Space Program really lifts off. Sorry, I just said that, but moving on. You can do the same thing in an unlimited number of ways. You can land on the Mun with an Apollo Lunar Lander replica you built, or with the sleek, futuristic-looking space plane. I've landed there with Kerbal statue before. And if you're a frequent traveler of the KSP Reddit, you'll see just how diverse builds can get. People have made the Star Theory logo out of Kerbal's. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. And build space stations with asteroids. Sounds fun? It may be, but beware. This is no trivial game. I know this video is about why you should buy Kerbal's Space Program, but to be honest, if you don't like a challenging learning experience, this game may not be for you. I have a friend who bought the game and just did not figure it out. That doesn't mean he couldn't, he just didn't feel like it. But I don't think that should deter you from trying out Kerbal Space Frame for yourself. I and a lot of other people find the game to be a lot of fun, despite the fact that it can be so difficult. It's a very achievement-oriented game. You always want to push your limits and go further than you could before. You start out barely being able to get a rocket off the ground to landing one on the mud. And then you'll try to land on another planet, and once you've done that, you'll try to land on the moons of further away planets, and it goes on. One of the best things about Kerbal Space Program is that even if you can't complete one of those steps, you can always go online to the subreddit and ask for help. Most of the time, the community is gladly willing to assist new and old players. It's also a great source of entertainment, as most of the time the posts are something funny or impressive. A very classic example of KSP hospitality is all of the over 1k upvote posts that are something like, I landed on the mine for the first time. To be clear here, landing on and returning from the mine, which is, as I said earlier, is the moon closest to the planet you launch everything from, is one of the first big milestones in the game, and it's something that a lot of players struggle with. Another great thing about the community is how many mods have been made ranging from graphical enhancements to new planets, moons, and even solar systems, not to mention the hundreds of mods that add new parts. Also, most mods are pretty high quality, with good textures, models, and balanced power. Now, I've covered a lot of the features in Kerbal Space Program so far, and I haven't even talked about planes and other aeronautics-based vehicles, 
but I think for the sake of neatness and time, I'll stop explaining Kerbal Space Program's features, and I'll just show you what a standard mission might look like. So, now I'm in the VAB, the Vehicle Assembly Building, and I've decided to do a simple mission to the planet Duna and back. Duna is the planet that looks a lot like Mars, and it is the analog of Mars, meaning the in-game equivalent of Mars. To be specific, I'm going to be sending two Kerbals to the surface of Duna, and then back to the surface of Kerbin. So, uh, I'd also like to refrain from going full in-depth, as if this were a uh, tutorial. So, uh, don't expect this to be like a tutorial, I'm just going to kind of give the gist of what's going on. So right now, I have to somehow transport those two Kerbals, so I have a command pod that can carry two Kerbals. On top of it is a parachute, that's to make sure that when they land back at Kerbin, they actually land back in Kerbin in one piece and not in an explosion, which would happen without a parachute. Below the command pod is a heat shield, that is of course to protect the Kerbals and the, or really the command pod and the parachute from the effects of re-entry when they re-enter Kerbin's atmosphere. And then below that is a small fuel tank and engine, and that will get the Kerbals back to the planet Kerbin, and also it'll be the engine that I use to uh, descend onto the surface of Duna and to ascend from the surface of Duna into orbit around Duna. So what I'm doing here is I just put down some parachutes and a heat shield that will protect the lander and everything else from the effects of re-entry when we're landing on Duna. And actually, actually the plan here is to shoot ourselves straight into Duna's atmosphere from interplanetary travel. And then also, uh, something I haven't talked about yet that's a pretty big part of the game, is something called science mode where you still don't have to worry about funds but you do have to unlock parts to be able to use them and you do that using these things called science points and you get science points through scientific instruments this is the first stage it's just a simple solid rocket booster pair with a liquid fuel core stage and in a moment here we're going to see that lift off um, it's really quite simple, I basically just slapped on those two, uh, boosters, those two solid rocket boosters, because alone that liquid fuel stage wouldn't have had the energy to get this whole thing into orbit, um, and so I just had to add a little bit more energy in the form of those solid rocket boosters, which are then discarded. And that's called staging, it's something that's done in real life too where basically I could have kept those boosters on completely empty and made this engine that's burning right now carry them into orbit, but that is just extra mass that this engine has to carry. Once I got into orbit, I set up a course to bring our craft close enough to Duna so that later on I could do another, uh, I guess, burn in deep space to put myself on a more accurate trajectory. I'd rather not get into what these are called. They're called maneuver nodes, but it's kind of a whole complicated thing. It's pretty much how you actually plan uh, interplanetary travel and also really just travel in space in general. You know, you might think when you're getting this game or if you haven't gotten this game that you have to like do really complicated math to find out what you have to do to get to specific places, but you don't. Once I got there, 295 days later, I discarded the transfer stage, which I know I didn't really discuss that much, but there just really wasn't much to discuss about it. Uh, anyway, discarded that, and then I deployed the inflatable heat shield, which is one of the neatest features of Kerbal Space Program. It's very useful for things like bases, things like this, where you have a wide lander. Everything went fine. Of course, there's, uh, there's no, I guess, errors in flight, like parts won't go wrong. <laughs> you know, your parachutes will always deploy if you make them deploy, if you are going slow enough. Gentle touchdown on the surface of Duna. Once 
uh, night was over, I just sent my Kerbals out for a short EVA to plant the flag and to get more scientific data in the form of, like, soil samples and stuff. Once they got back inside of their lander, they recorded some of the, da or not really some, all of the data from the scientific instruments, and this is meant to give you an example of what you would really do a mission for, so to speak, in science mode. Uh, you basically just collect the data from different instruments, you get the science points, and then you return them back to Kerbin, and then you can unlock new parts. Enough about science mode, though I'm not even in science mode. Once I was done collecting scientific data from the instruments, I sent the craft into orbit using the remaining fuel in the lander stage, and then discarded the lander stage. And once I was in orbit, I had to wait for Kerbin and Duna to be in the proper alignment, or really the proper uh, relative positions to one another, and once they were, I was able to set up another course to bring me back to Kerbin. Once I returned, or I guess not I, I keep saying I and changing the tense. <laughs> once my Kerbals got back to Kerbin, they discarded that final transfer stage and were ready to re-enter the atmosphere of Kerbin. Which is always a nice and cinematic uh, events, I suppose. Also, I landed, I guess, pretty close to the KSC, uh, just in the ocean to the left of the continent that the KSC is on. You can kind of see it there to the right of the screen. But anyway, though, that wraps it up for this sort of demo mission. They slashed down safely and were taken back home to the KSC. So, I would say that is a pretty good representation of normal KSP gameplay if everything went perfectly. I didn't show the something like four times it took me to get the craft into orbit around Kerbin, nor the times where I read in my design, and nor did it show my game crash while I was getting the lander into orbit around Duna. Either way, I hope that little demo has made you want to get Kerbal Space for him, or at least cleared up some misconceptions you might have had about it. To be honest, I could have done something way more impressive and inspiring, but again, this video was supposed to be about the reasons you should get Kerbal Space Program, and so I wanted to do a mission that reflected that goal. If you're looking for KSP inspiration, you could, I don't know, look at my other videos, or go to someone else's channel. Anyway, I think I've rambled on enough. I hope you'll at least try Kerbal Space Program now. You can buy it on Steam, the PS4, and the Xbox. Also. If you want to help me out, just take a second to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. And feel free to say in the comments maybe why you bought Kerbal Space Program, or again, why you think other people should buy Kerbal Space Program. Either way, that's it for this video, see you next time.